Welcome to episode 194 of Thrive, the podcast show by Additive Free Lifestyle. We're Tracy and Joe, and we're two sisters who are really, really passionate about asking questions and seeking information for things that make us super, super curious. We love our podcast show because we get to bring you just different things every single week. And this episode today is around the power of a really good morning routine. So we're going to dive right in and keep this episode as short as possible, which is hard because we both love to chat. (laughs) We do. So I was listening to a podcast the other day and it was about a morning routine and it was it was speaking right to me. So hopefully this podcast speaks right to you because both Tracy and I have a great morning routine, but for me personally, and it's Joe speaking, if you didn't pick that up, I lost my morning routine a few months ago because we moved into state. We were living in a caravan. Life was just absolutely messed up and crazy. And I found when I got into our new house and we were renovating and painting and up late, I realized after a good few weeks that I had completely lost my morning routine and it was not serving the whole day. And so I said to Trace, we have to record a podcast on a morning routine because it's just so important to have a beautiful, solid morning routine. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a solid routine, this is probably not the episode for you. So just skip through to the next one. But if, Well, I if loved just... the one that I loved the podcast I listened to. But so. I have a super solid routine and I know like you when it's out of whack. So my kids are currently, as we record this, 23 and 20 and they're not, I don't need to help them. Well, there's still times when I do, but mostly I don't need to help them. Um, but for me personally, my routine, like I've had a pretty solid morning routine from forever. And I don't know if that's my military background or if it's just something that mum drummed into us. Like I get my clothes out at night. I still do it. I'm 48 years old. I get my clothes out the night before. And if I don't do that, my morning routine's messed up. Like I stand in the cupboard. I look at clothes. I'm like, what am I wearing? I don't know. And it freaks me out. Like it's crazy the things that you can do that freak yourself out. But Yeah, I love my morning routine and it's definitely changed from, you know, when you've got babies to when you've got 20 year old kids, like it, it morphs over time. Yeah, it does get easier. My kids, as we record this are 10 and 13. Uh, So I still have children that I need to drive to school. Like we need to be, we have to leave here at eight o'clock. And it's really funny because there's one day of a week where um, my son has music and he has to be at school by 7.45. So we need to leave here by 7.30. And that day, it's Thursdays, it's always messed up. Like chaos. Yeah, just leaving that half an hour earlier creates just drama it's so yeah. weird um that's that's how robotic we all are in the morning but <laughs> it's but it's so yeah it's so good so um of course I've had little kids Tracy's had little kids so we understand but even then when they were little we still had a really solid morning oh. routine now this isn't about an episode about a morning routine for your children this is an episode about a morning routine for you You as a human, because you are a real person as well, not just a mother. Funny that. Yeah. (laughs) So my routine at the moment is pretty cruisy because I get up around 6.30, 6.45. I don't have to do anything for anybody else. I set all the diffusers on, open all the blinds, although it's dark as we're recording this, it's middle of winter. Uh, I open all the blinds. I put a log on the heater. Um, and generally like I might fault some washing or pack, like I don't have any kids to worry about. So it's great. It is all about me and you will all get there if you're not there yet. Uh, oh. I go for a walk. Um, I come back, have my shower, have my breakfast. And I'm generally in the office around somewhere around quarter past nine to nine 30. And I love my routine. And yep. again, because my afternoon routine isn't as strict as Joe's cause I'm no longer picking up children. From school, I get to, I stay in the office a little bit later. So that's sort of my day, but I love my morning routine. And if I don't stick to my routine, like Joe, my whole day's gone. And yeah. I know, and I've known this for years, if I don't exercise in the morning and I've done this, even when my kids were little and 
when I did was driving them to school, if I don't exercise in the morning, I generally don't do it. Mm-hmm. I generally don't do it. I have to really push myself to do it in the afternoon. And I yep. know this now as I'm getting older, I'm exhausted by the afternoon. I don't want to be pushing myself exercising. I don't want that stress in the afternoon. I'm like, up, oh, just get it done, get moving, get going, get out the door. Like it's so, for me, that works. I know every everyone's different. Yeah. So my morning routine, I the alarm goes off at five o'clock. Because yeah. I yeah. I have kids <laughs> and <laughs> and I like to exercise in the morning as well. I don't like to exercise in the afternoon. And for me and my kids, they all have sport in the afternoon. Like yeah. it's not actually about me in the afternoon, but it is about me in the morning. And so my alarm goes off at five o'clock. I have to quite often say three, two, one, up. And I force myself to turn that bedside lamp on and get up. Um, my husband, he exercise, he gets up anywhere from 3.45 to 4 a.m. to exercise before he goes to work mm. uh, because, again, morning routine and it's a space for our solitude. Yeah. It's a space for our time and a space like it's where I do a lot of my thinking. Yeah. It's it's when I, um, I just have I don't fun. look at my like, phone. No. So that's another thing that, that is another thing that I had to break as well. And I had got into the habit of uh, sleeping with my phone next to me using the excuse of that it has my alarm clock on it. Yep. Like, so I went head, headed down to Kmart and got a $12 alarm clock. And now my phone is out in the kitchen like yours has always been, Trace. And I, I really do think that that's important. And it does stop you from the second you wake up to start scrolling. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my alarm goes off at 5 o'clock. I get dressed straight away. I give myself 15 minutes and I'm out of the door and I head to gym um, or I go for a walk or I do a workout at home. When my kids were really little, uh, I would I bought programs online and I still got up at five o'clock, 10 past five, quarter past five, and I did my workout at home. Again, my time. And sometimes, you know, when they were little, uh, they would come in and try to talk to me or like want breakfast or whatever it might be. And we had to set a really strong rule of don't talk to mummy when she's exercising unless there's an emergency, like you're welcome to sit on the couch, read a book, do whatever you want to do, but you don't actually need me until it's time to get ready for school. And so my kids have actually known that from probably when they're about two years old of leave me alone until I'm done. Like, and some people will be listening to this going, oh, that's awful. You're such a bad mum. But I listen to it and I'm like, yeah, man, this is the best. Like it's, yes, yes, I'm a fantastic mother and I don't mind admitting it. I'm a good mum. I'm, if my kids need me, I am there any day, hmm. any time, any day of the week. And jo, I know Joe's the same. But when it's me time, like if I am in the sauna or if I am, at a hairdressing appointment, like I've taken my kids to the hairdresser and I'm like, you sit there and you don't move because mummy is getting your hair done. Um, but <laughs> it's so really important because they've got to understand, like kids need to learn behavior. And if you're not teaching them, it's it's not okay to interrupt me every two seconds about yeah. something trivial. Yeah. Um, then, you know, who else is going to teach them? So anyway, I, I applaud you. Yeah, or or when they start fighting. And oh, you just, my God. Oh, like that happened this morning. I mean, I, he comes in while I'm in the shower and goes, <laughs> and goes, I got the toaster out and Eva put her bread in it. I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> like, for real? Oh, I'm just, radio, go away. Okay, I can beat that. This is so <laughs> off topic, but funny story. So I would be somewhere in, like in another state. And my kids would ring me and they'd go, mum, like such and such or something's happened. I'm like, how would you like me to fix that? Like I might be visiting Joe or uh, I don't know, whatever it might be, or I might be at work or what, whatever. And how would you like me to fix that situation? Because I'm not even there in the house. Like, especially when they got their driver's license and they'd call and I'm like, yeah, just sort it out. Kids, yeah. just sort it out. Yeah. Anyway, off topic, morning routine. Don't. Okay wake up to your phone, put it somewhere else. So, so, so important. 
Yeah, get up earlier. I know that sounds harsh, but get up earlier. My, yeah. As I said, my alarm goes off at 5 o'clock because that's what time it has to go off. Get yeah. to bed earlier. I get yeah. to bed by 8.30 to 9 o'clock every single night now because Shane's up at 3.45 to 4 o'clock. Like, yep. you know, what's the point in scrolling my phone till 10 p.m., which yeah, exactly. I do a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, have it as your solitude time. Have it as your thinking time. It doesn't have to be exercise either. It can be journaling or meditation yeah. or just sitting there with a cup of coffee watching the sunrise or whatever it is. It is yeah. about you and nobody else. Yeah. Even even I got as strict as, and I know, they would, like you said, there would be people listening to me thinking, oh, God. But, like, when they were little and in a pram, I had a double pram and, you know, a baby and a three-year-old. I would sit them in the pram with all their snacks and whack my earphones in because I needed it to still be my time. Mm. And also what it has done now that I can see that my daughter is getting older, um, she's sort of, you know, she's just a young teenager now, but they're starting to prioritise their exercise time and their their time. And if I hadn't taught them how to do that, I don't want her becoming a mum because men it's kind of a given but I don't want her to be becoming a mum and not having any time for herself either mm, yeah it's really important to set yeah. those those standards I guess like my standards are pretty high and I will put myself first quite a lot because I like Joe said at the very start I'm, I'm a real person and I need to I need downtime just the same as everybody else and I am an awful mother if I don't get downtime and yeah. my kids know that. And I've, again, trained them, well, not trained them, but set those expectations and boundaries and taught them those as well so that they can take that into their life as well. Yeah. The other thing that I love doing when I was, when we had kids, when I had kids, I still have kids. When I had little kids, I would get a lot of stuff done at nighttime so that my morning routine was so much easier. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is hard for some people because my night times were super busy as well. Like there are some nights I wasn't getting home from dancing with the kids. Like they dance, not me. <laughs> I wouldn't get home till like 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. The last thing I wanted to do is get ready for the morning. But I knew that if I didn't have my dishes packed away, if I didn't have the kitchen a little bit sorted, if I didn't have my clothes out the night before, I had to do all of that in the morning mm -hmm. and that mucked my morning routine up and mm -hmm. therefore just it was chaos again. So just that little bit of extra planning and again, maybe that's the military coming out of me, but that planning makes better performance. And mm -hmm. if we can plan better, we can perform better and that means we can parent better or whatever it might look like for you. Um, so yeah, I really, really encourage you to think about your morning routine. Is it working for you? Great. Keep doing it. If it's not working for you, just tweak it a little bit until it does, because it's, it sets your whole entire day up. Yeah. There's so day. much science. We're going to go now because we're way over time for a short episode, but there's just so much science to raising your endorphins, having that self-care time, yep. setting your intentions so much science to it. So yeah. that's it. And over I just want to no, I want to say oh. just one last thing, Joe. And because we said this before we started recording, both of us start have started walking or when we do walk or exercise outside, uh, I have turned my earphones off. I don't, I take my phone just in my pocket, but I don't plug any earphones in. And I have done that now for probably the last two years. And it's so different to go for a walk mm -hmm. and actually look at your surroundings and hear your surroundings rather than walk consuming. Yeah. So you can, I can consume in many other forms, but I don't need to be consuming when I'm out just having a beautiful, peaceful walk. So just think about those things as well. It's so lovely, isn't it? I saw yeah. a whole flock of cockatoos come over me today and I wouldn't have heard them if I had my earphones in. So yeah. I agree. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Are we done? We're done. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>